Do you want to know how to make someone feel heard? It's so important that everyone feels heard and understood. Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I'm a communications and parenting expert. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to help the people around us feel like they're more heard. In this video, I'm going to share with you five things that you can do to help other people feel more heard. And if you stay all the way to the end, I've got a special bonus tip for you that you're not going to want to miss. Tip number one, have a calm face, voice, and body when you're listening to another person or when you're talking to another person. People read emotional cues and your face, body, and voice all give the message of how you are really taking their information. So practice. What does it look like for you to have a calm face, voice, and body. Practice those things so that you can repeat them at the time when you know someone really needs to know that you hear and understand. Tip number two, make eye contact. It is a universal symbol of I heard you when you look at someone in the eyes. That means don't look at your phone, don't get distracted by something else, don't look at your watch and check the time. Really look at their eyes. Look deeply into them. And you know what? If you want to look in there and see the goodness at the same time that they're talking to you, they'll feel that too. Tip number three, really listen. I mean, for real, oftentimes when people are telling you something, you start thinking your own dialogue at the same time. You start thinking, oh, I want to tell him this. I want to say this. I want to explain this. Don't do that. Really listen. Just sit there and listen. And if there's a gap in the conversation, say, I'm sorry, there's a gap right now. I'm thinking of what to say because I was just really taking in what you were telling me. Let them know that any gap means I'm listening. But if you're not thinking your own thoughts, they'll feel your receptiveness. It makes all the difference. Tip four, ask questions. Not too many, mind you. You don't want to monopolize the conversation. If someone is going to feel heard, they need to be able to do as much talking as they need to do. I know this can be hard, especially if someone happens to be a pretty long talker. But if they need it, they need it. You love them. You care about them. You're there for them. Take the time. Don't worry about it. And ask questions to get additional answers from them. Help them tell you more. When you want to know more, they know you really care. Tip number five, repeat back things to them from time to time. You might say something like, so it sounds like you're saying that every time I do this, I'm not paying attention to this other thing or whatever it happens to be. Make sure that you repeat back so they know you got the message. Seeking to understand another person by repeating back what it is they told you shows them that you really were understanding and that you wanted that information. In fact, you want it enough that you want to gain clarity. But don't do that thing where you add your own interpretations into the description of what they supposedly said. That's putting words in their mouth and then they feel like they can't trust you and it's not good listening. In fact, it's very selfish listening. So repeat back what you know and then let them add to it. Now here's the bonus tip because you stayed all the way to the end. When you're presenting a new idea to them, so after you've listened to them and they feel pretty understood and you can tell that they feel pretty understood, present your new idea with a disagree appropriately mindset. What does that mean, disagree appropriately, right? So in our family, we teach four basic skills. One of those four basic skills is a skill called disagree appropriately. The principle behind this skill is seek to understand, then to be understood. So if you're going to present an idea or a suggestion, try to lead them in some way after they've been really open with you, then what you want to do is seek to understand, then to be understood. So you look at them, you keep a calm face, voice, and body, and then you say that you understand their point of view. You share your point of view and listen to what they have to say. Let them make their decision 
say okay and then stop talking about it. That's how you present an idea with a disagree appropriately mindset. So it might sound something like this. It sounds to me like the way we've been handling our morning routine just really is not working for you. What I think we might want to do is schedule a time where we can go over alternative ways to run our morning routine so that it works better for everyone. Would you be okay with that? Make suggestions but do it in a way where they know you really understand and you still want to have their input and that it's valuable. Did you like this video? If so, give me a thumbs up and be sure to comment below to let me know what other kinds of videos you would like for me to make for you. And if you've loved this video, I know you're going to enjoy my next one, which is how to improve the emotional intelligence in children. Click on that link.